Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you. Thank you for another wonderful opportunity to come before you, to share knowledge with one another in the area of our health and our wellness. We thank you for having helped us thus far. This is our episode 192. For 192 times, I've always appeared on this program every 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Lord, we thank you for how far you have helped us from last Sunday till today. We are trusting you, oh God, for another wonderful episode, episode 192. Lord God Almighty, I thank you for how far you have helped us, myself especially, from last Monday till Friday, I went in quest of more knowledge on the assignment you have given unto me. And you helped me throughout the class, sitting down, standing up, going up, going down, leaving my house. Father God, I am grateful. Today, we are continuing on our series, Healthy Boundaries. Father, I pray that more wisdom be granted unto us as we relate with one another, as we relate with our fellow workers, as we relate with our colleagues, our spouses, our own children, because all these low self-esteem, they start from childhood, as we enable us to continue with this series, maybe next week, maybe today, we'll talk on the different types of parenting and the one that is better than the, the one that's the best among the three. Father, we thank you. We are so grateful. Thank you for the people that will join for the first time. I pray that their lives will be impacted positively to the glory and the praise of your name in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Thank you so very much. My name is Mo Lisa Fevo Aforma Chuku. By God's grace, I anchor this program, Great Life with Dr. Aforma, and Great Life airs every Sunday evening, 8 p.m. Nigerian time. What do we do here? We talk about health in all ramifications. Since June, we have been dealing on a topic, healthy boundaries. Many of us that don't know that we violate boundaries, the way we relate with our spouses, our friends, our colleagues, the people we meet wherever. So today we are continuing. This is our episode 192, 192. This program started on the 22nd day of September, 2019. The Lord called me to the Ministry of Health and Wellness in 20, May 2017. And he said to me, go and develop yourself in line with the ministry. And that was what took me to Rafa Institute of Healthy Living, founded by Reverend Tony Akinyemi. He's my foremost coach, health coach, and a mentor. So the school I attended this week is also that school. I went back to module one because I did module one in 2017, July. And I felt it's a long time. I need to go and make sure that I am in tune with what I teach people. I have a P, I'm not a medical doctor. You know, I always tell us that. I have a PhD in guidance and counseling with psychology from the University of Lagos 12 years ago. And when I was called into this ministry, the Lord told me to begin to develop myself. And I began that quest. That was what led me to Rafa Institute of Healthy Living, founded by Reverend Tony Akinyemi. And I also met some amazing people along this journey. Chief among them is Dr. Patrick Ijewere, who is also a medical doctor. Reverend Tony is one of the foremost holistic health coaches in Nigeria, even not in Africa. He's well versed. I attended his school and I employ us by God's grace. The next module one, I will want to make sure that as many people from this, my group, 
you attend. It's, it, will, it, it, it will be worth your time and your money. Yes, you are listening to Dr. Favor a former Chukumolisa. And today is our episode 192. Somebody asked me, you said nine, 192. I said, yes. I've been doing this consistency. Inconsistency lies the power. In 2018, the Lord took us to a program called Uncooked Food Challenge. In Uncooked Food Challenge, we go without eating anything cooked in fire by fire through fire. Those of us that are in my own ministry WhatsApp group, we do it every other month. We do it six times a year corporately, but many of us, they've, we have adopted it as our lifestyle. We make sure that we take in more uncooked food than the cooked food because every cooked food is a dead food. It's my pleasure welcoming you on set. Today is our episode 192 and we are continuing with our series on setting healthy boundaries. Many people don't know that there are boundaries. You may be a GO, a GO's wife, a principal, an administrator, but you don't know when you violate boundaries. And these things happen when we don't understand what healthy boundaries are. If you are joining me for the first time, you can go back when we are through to my YouTube page, Dr. Favor, and begin from the beginning. What are what is a healthy boundary? What, are, what types of boundaries we have? We have physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, sexual boundaries, time boundaries, uh, material boundaries, and intellectual boundaries. So, so you may do yourself a great deal of favor by going back to watch and then get yourself acquainted with what we do. So it's my pleasure welcoming you. Remember, my name is Moli Safevo Apomachuko. I am not a medical doctor, but I have a PhD. I have a doctorate degree in guidance and counseling with psychology from the University of Lagos 12 years ago. And I'm a healthy living ambassador from Rafa Institute of Healthy Living and also a graduate of Green Life Center for Natural and Alternative Medicine. Um, I have certifications in a few. God bless you for joining us. Today, we are going to look at what do boundary violations look like. You know, last week, we dealt on what do unhealthy boundaries look like. We are, we are going to look at today, what do boundary violations, because there are things you do, you violate boundaries. If you are following me so far, can you please indicate by typing a two on the chat, please? You can invite your friends to join us as we are about taking off. Somebody told me she, was, she slept through last week and by the time she woke up, it was almost getting to to eight, she said there was no point. I told her she would, we would have joined. So thank you so, so very much. You see me, no powder on my face because yesterday I took a friend that turned 16. She's my mentor in this ministry. When I was called to this ministry, she was one of the people that stood behind me and gave me the right start. So when she turned 60, I told her, I'm going to give you a treat. Treat is not only to go to fast food and eat a very unhealthy meal. I took her to spa. So then I also took care of myself. So I did facials and I was instructed by small young, young girls. Mommy, don't rub anything on your face for the next three days. You see, they told me not to do that. And I didn't do that. But in health and wellness, a health coach may tell you, don't eat this, don't do that. You violate it. And when you violate it, you pay the price. Because in health and wellness, there must be things you stop doing and there must be things you start doing. We are not going into that. If you go to the YouTube channel, you see a whole lot of videos that will help you. Today, we want to continue 
on uh, the series we have, we started this series on the 4th, yeah, 4th of June. Healthy boundaries. What do boundary violations look like? Number one, physical contact that is not permitted. You know, there are people that don't want to be touched. There are people that don't want to be, you know, you don't understand what I'm saying. You may greet them, but you know, if a lady doesn't bring out her hand to shake you, you don't shake her. You don't shake her. Some people I know, they don't like to be shaked. To be, you know, they don't like people to shake them. Some people, you see them, you hug them. Depending on the relationship you have built over the time with that person. Now, physical contact that is not permitted, that's a boundary violation. Sex without consent. I overheard a lady that we spoke about last week saying that on her wedding night, her husband practically raped her because she was a virgin. She doesn't know much about sex and sexual relationships and she was raped. So that is a violation. Then physical and emotional abuse. You know, some people, they may not hit you, but they abuse you. When a man tells a wife, I won't sleep with you. Rather than sleeping with you to make babies, I rather masturbate. That's a physical, that's an emotional abuse. Some people abuse their wives financially. You have the capacity to give her certain things for the running of the home, but you denied her that. Then the next one is manipulation. Many Christians fall into this. They manipulate you on the guise of anointing or man of God or woman of God or the pastor's wife or pastor's auntie. You know, those stuff, stuff. They have done that to me, so I know them. Manipulation is a boundary violation. Then um, the next one, taking belongings without permission. You don't take things that are not yours without permission. These are boundary. Who told, who was talking to me the other day? Okay. A sister I went with to that training, Mrs. Ibel Ezekiel. I think one of the sons called her. She laughed. She told me, you see my children, they can't take anything from the freezer without taking permission from me. These are both graduates. So you see the boundaries. You, it is good because many people came to me now to tell me I am getting myself. I am, I am saying no without feeling guilty because that's one of the things you learn. You say no without feeling guilty. Many of us don't know how to say no. Many of us don't know how to say, I don't want this. They don't. These are things you learn. They didn't teach us in school. Maybe our parents didn't teach us. But we, we know now, I, my father, my mother died when I was two years and five months. So I was practically raised by my dad. And my dad did a fantastic job raising me. He taught me assertiveness. I am very, very respectful, very humble, but I, I, I speak my mind because he will always tell me anything you don't want, say it. That's why anywhere I go to, I am always myself. You won't see any airs around me because I wasn't raised like that. And I try to raise my children also in that order. The next one, sharing confidential information without permission. That I'm a professional guidance counselor. I'm a professional guidance counselor. There are certain information somebody will share with me, even if the other person is the spouse of that person. I won't share it because confidentiality is one of the hallmarks of a professional guidance counselor. You know, many people that are called maybe pastors, reverend, they assume they are counselors. No, there are specific skills a professional guidance counselor needs to have. And one of the other skills is confidentiality. You don't even preach with somebody's issue. I may discuss somebody, but the way I will fashion it, that person will not even link it to her. That I was discussing her issue or some, some of the people, I will tell them point blank. I will share your story, but I won't call your name because I want, to, I want people to learn. The next one is posting pictures 
on social media without permission. Maybe you went to, I used to do that, but so, somehow I stopped. I may go for a Christian uh, child's dedication. I take the picture of the child. I'll post it. I'll say, I went to. But we don't know whether the parents of the child want the child to be shown. So these are violations. You may be doing that without you knowing. Then the next one is bullying. Bullying. You know, some people bully others. They bully others without even knowing that they bully others. Bullying is not hitting people. When your behavior is always making the other person, well, just. Lights went off. Sorry about that, the light went off and the inverter was also off. So bullying is not only hitting somebody. When you make somebody feel less of him or herself, make that person uncomfortable, you are a bully. You can bully people online. You can bully people in the school. There's a, a woman I know, her child, I knew her child was in a school in Abuja. When I asked after the the child, she said she had withdrew, she withdrew her back to Lagos that they were bullying her. They will not be, you know, they will decide not to talk to her. They will decide to form a gang against her. She may be beautiful or she may be a quiet person or she may be a neat person or she may be from a, a, a background that she doesn't talk. She's an introvert and they want to retrain her and to remake her. These are forms of bullying. These are forms of bullying. Another one is intimidating body language can be interpreted in more than one way and it will depend on the other person's intentions. Unfortunately, there are people in the world who are just terrible at communication and are unwilling to learn. You know how I usually know somebody that is not willing to learn. If I come into a, 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 um, maybe a class, I'll just quietly stop the every but because I have psychology as a course I studied, I will begin to look at people. Some people you see that they are struggling with self, low self-esteem by the things they do. By the things they do. They may be in a if they may be in, in a maybe now in a in a class, and at the end of the class, instead of them telling the other person. Okay, see you tomorrow. How are you going? See you. They will just take their bags and go. Those people are struggling with low self-esteem, but they don't know. They think they are. And if those people don't come down to be taught, they will grow with it. They have already grown with it and they'll continue doing it, that. A lady went to a friend of mine. This training we went to because she wore one beautiful uh, gown. One day. That was what she told her. Did you wear your church clothes to the training? I said, what? The thing in my head just blew up and down. And this is a lady that, when we did the introduction, she introduced herself as working in an educational setting. I said, she asked you that? She said, yes. I said, what? I was, I was alarmed. So you know what she did? Because she knew this. The next day, that lady wore another dress. She went to her and told her, oh, because I wore my church dress yesterday, is that why you wore your church dress? You see, there are things you don't say to people. There are when you see, because I saw that lady and I saw she was struggling with low self-esteem. I knew it. And because she does it, she didn't want to be helped. I left her at that. Because as a counselor, you don't 
you don't preach protocol and you don't give unsolicited advice. But I knew that lady was struggling with very, very low, beautiful woman, but she has low, low self-esteem. Now, what happens when you don't set boundaries? If you are making, if you are having, if you are getting value, value from what I'm discussing with us tonight, can you please type a three on the chat? I will tell you what happens when you don't set boundaries. Can you imagine a, a, a whole woman, a full-fledged woman going to ask another full-fledged woman, you came with your church dress. Is that, that is the height of boundary violation. She may not know. She may not even understand why she said what she said. You know, anytime you feel you're on top of everybody, anytime you feel you have arrived, you are struggling with low self-esteem. That's why you pay attention. When you go to gatherings, pay attention. I shared a testimony of how God delivered me from high blood pressure during one of our sections in, in this training. And as I was coming from the convenience room, one of them, one of us, she said to me, you see, you see, never. one of us said to me, just one minute. Don't want to change up and down. So one of us said to me, you made my day. You made my time. This testimony you shared about how you do exercises, how God helped you out of high blood pressure, it made my day. And she was just, I said, really? I said, she said, yes. She said, thank you so very much. Ma. So as we were talking, another came and said, it's as if I want to give you a hug, ma. That thing you said made my day. I just opened my, my, my hand and I, you see people that want to learn. But anytime you come to a, a, a gathering and you are feeling you are on top, you are struggling. You are struggling. So I knew that woman from the first day she came, I knew she was struggling with very low self-esteem. Not that she has low, self, very low one. Very low, very beautiful woman. But no, 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 no. Now, what happens when you don't set boundaries? Some people are, are amazing at putting on a mask. You know what is a mask? When I cover my face now, or I, you know, face masks now, that's pretense, disguise. Some people are amazing at putting on a mask so that from the outside, they seem fine. From the outside, they seem fine, but they are not fine. Because we feel that the needs of others are most important than our own. It is easy for others to take advantage. This lack of balance causes the dominant partner to feel, to feed on the weaker. The dominant partner now, maybe their friends, or husband and wife. Have you not seen friends when you were in secondary school, for example, you are the one they are drinking her meal. You are the one that are eating her cabin. You are the one that's bringing money to buy ice cream. The other person will just pretend. And if you don't do it, you feel you are, you are not a good person. You see that person that's doing that. As we go on, you will find out that there is a problem. You know, psychology is the scientific behavior of women. Scientific behavior. So anywhere I appear, I sit down, I watch the congregation, I will say this one, this one, this one has beautiful self-esteem. And I will go and associate with that person because I don't want to bring down my God. I will go and associate with that person. You may think we have known for years, but because I've noticed something in the inside of that person, and that thing is helping me. No, all these things we are talking about, I will tell us as we go on why it affects our health and why we need to set boundaries. Somebody told me, now I can say no without feeling guilty. 
you need to. Saying no, see the word N-O, is a very important word to say. When you don't want something, say you don't want it. And don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. We were given task to in groups to present. And incidentally, in, in the group where I was placed, I was the last. So one of us chatted me that I will be the coordinator of that group. I will be, I will kind of be the spokesperson because one person will present the assignment. I told him, no problem. When we come, we get somebody that will do it better. The man said, hmm. <laughs> he will be thinking, I have gone through the, the, the modules and I am, I am better than all of them. But when I saw him, I said, no, that's the more reason why I shouldn't do that. Let somebody that just got a level playing ground information do that so that we are not struggling. Anytime you see yourself competing with somebody else, you have a low self-esteem. The only person you are supposed to compete with is that person you see on the mirror and that person is you. That's why when I found out that, is there anything I'm missing out from my school? I said, let me go back. Have a, I paid even the full money before they told me that refresher space, can I, go, can I, go? I sat down. If not, if not the fact that I was asked to introduce myself, they will not know that I've been there because that's my life. When you notice your partner making frequent comments about what they prefer you to wear or what they don't like, they are crossing a boundary. You know, you may, there's a friend of mine, very good friend. So every time the husband will always be after her. So I told her, the husband loves you so much. This thing is years back. You know what she told me? This is not love. This is, this is abuse. She told me this is abuse. The man doesn't want her to have every time. Where are you calling? Not that she, he wants to know her, about her welfare. It's just what are you doing? Where are you? Who are you with? You know, some men are like that. They will be taking beds. Uh, they will tell the wife, let me see. Is there anybody? Tell me where you drop from the bus going home. Excuse me. You know what I, I tell people? You don't kill narcissism. When you discover such thing in the beginning of a marriage, you walk away. You can't change that. All the people I canceled, they let her, their marriage let her scatter because from the beginning it was faulty. And they thought they could manage. They thought they could, they could change. You don't change anybody. The only person you are permitted to change is yourself. The other people, they may decide to do what, if I want to change now, I'll change. If I don't want to change, no matter what you say, now you are, you are, you are, you are on your own. So when anybody is always telling you, why you, you see what the person that say you walk in church clothes to, you see what, what made her even go to that level? Hey, I was, when she told me this, I say, what in this age and generation? Yeah? Hey, she said, yes. Yeah, so. You see? Verbal abuse, physical abuse, or sexual abuse is a clear line that cannot be crossed whether you are a male or a female. You see verbal abuse. If you see physical abuse or sexual abuse, I told us of somebody that hit my bumbo one once upon a time. And I turned to the person, I said, if you ever, Try it again, I will slap you. If I tell you the position of that person in my life, you will shout. But because he, he has broken, he, he, not that he crossed the boundary, he, he broke the bridge. I said, no, I was younger. I was less than 30 years. But I told him, if you ever try, I will slap you. And uh, Jehovah himself knows well. If he had tried it, I could have slapped him. Tell me the truth. So teach your children. Nobody touches their bumbles. Nobody touches so many parts of their body. Teach your children sex and sexuality so that when somebody wants to cross the boundary, they will know. And they will say, no, you are not supposed to touch this place. You are not supposed to do this. I gave us instance of a woman that was a hawker. 
The mother told her, don't go inside the house to sell to anybody and don't go to a corner. Just make sure that what you are selling, you sell it at the full glare of everybody. And that woman up to now, she's grown, but she says she likes hawking. Anytime she sees the traffic, she says, hey, I see plenty of money here. But when people were reacting to that radio program, Sonny, um, Sonny Rabo, live, a woman said that the main hero in that story is the mother of that woman, not even the, the woman. So if a woman hits you or a man insults you, it's abuse. You know, some men are being abused by their wives, but they don't talk because they told them that men don't cry. I know a man that the wife beats. After beating him, the wife will tell him with all the pains because he, he, he wasn't raised to be violent. Let me give us a clear, a, an example that everybody can relate with. Many of us here pray with um, Pastor Jerry Eze, NSPPD prayer. If you watch the wife's, if you have read the wife's book, I've not been able to get the book, but you have watched the wife's interview. The name of that book is, I Almost Ruined My Marriage. Because she says she grew up where a, the father and the mother would be exchanging words, you know, talking, talking. So when she began, when she got married to Jerry, he, she began to do it. And Jerry wasn't raised like that. Jerry would be looking at her. What has come over my wife? She will be talking, 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 talking. Jerry will just recline and be crying. She said the first day, she said, instead of him to be talking back at me, she, he was even crying. At a point, Jerry started praying to God. What have I got? But you told me this is my wife. This, that, that, that. Now, when God has helped Eno, Jerry, is it? Anytime Eno wants to talk to the husband, she is all, at times she will like to fly flat. This one, they went to England, London. She, she wanted to thank him. She knelt down. Uh, uh, Jerry said, get up, stand up and be talking. We are hearing you. For you to know that upbringing is a very, 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 very important thing in the scheme of what we are in. Now, it is unacceptable, undeserved, and a sign of a toxic relationship when a woman hits you or a man insults you. I know one of the one of the girls I can't say. You know what the husband would tell her? She began, she registered in a gym to bring her, to bring down her weight. You know what the man would tell her? Who is even listening? Who is even looking at you? You big and dirty pig. No matter, even if you die there, I don't even care. So this girl was having her, her, her mind was corrupted. She began to eat. She would tell me, Auntie, Mommy, around 2 a.m., I'll go to open the fridge. I'll bring bread. I'll bring this. I'll begin to I'll eat. It's not that I'm hungry, but I'm just finding solace in eating. When this girl came to me, she was weighing 130 kg, very big like this. Today, if you see her, very fine. Because what we do in counseling, we lay the, the cards on the table and we ask you, this, 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 what works and what doesn't work. I will tell you this thing we need to hear, but you have to make up your mind. I will tell you, do this. I will give you options and you choose from the options. I hope we are making progress. If you are getting value from what I'm sharing with us this evening, can you please type a 444? Once again, if you are joining me for the first time, this is Dr. Favor Afoma Chukungolisa. I'm not a medical doctor. I have a PhD in guidance and counseling with psychology from the University of Lagos 12 years ago. And the Lord called me to Ministry of Health and Wellness in 2017. And by God's grace, I'm a healthy living ambassador. And then I have some certifications in alternative and natural medicine. You are listening to Great life with Dr. Favor, a former. You know, my the new invite included Favor. Some people don't know both are my names. Some people call me Dr. Aforma. Some people call me Dr. Favor. So it's my pleasure that you came. And I know you're having good time for your being here. 
after an extended time of not having clear boundaries, you will start to see a negative impact on your health. You know, everything we do here boils down to your health. When, you, when people, you know, eh, people can run over your life if you don't set boundaries. You tell them we are meeting at 10, they come there by 11. They don't even apologize and they do it. We have talked about this when we talked about time boundaries, physical boundaries, sexual boundaries, and the rest of them. You can go back to, to the episodes. This is our episode 192. For 192 times, I've been doing this program. Now, after an extended time of not having clear boundaries, you will start to see a negative impact on your health. This may include, number one, lack of sleep. Many of us don't sleep well, not because of anything, but because of what is happening around us that we did not even relate to what we are discussing now. You may not even relate it to it. You don't see any correlation between things happening around you to you are not sleeping well. So after an extended period of time, you, be, you will begin to see a negative impact of all these violations on your health. Number one, it may include lack of sleep. And you know, the body only repairs itself while at rest. That will take me to one of the lecturers that taught me, she wrote a book, uh, Body Clock. I met her, Mrs. Ololo. I met her in this training that we went, uh, I went to. And I told her, I will feature you in my program. I have a program on Sundays. So I told her, we talked yesterday. She even, I found out that she, also, she already had another book. Let me show us. You know, what I do here is to promote people. Whenever you see yourself, only you, I, me, you are the lowest level of existence. When you don't bring people, when you don't encourage people, I bought things from one grandma from the training we went to, and I gave her feedback. She was so happy. I told her, I feel good about myself. That's why I always make people to feel good. And anybody that goes out of her way to produce something, I want to project that. Especially when that thing is not evil. I won't project a sugar mommy now sleeping with young boys. I don't do that. I'm a Christian. And everything about me must be in that angle. So I found out that she wrote another book, Goodbye to Cancer. So I will feature the author of this book and the author of the body clock Maybe the last Sunday, I would do a flyer, the last Sunday in July. So she will talk to us herself. I will introduce her and then she will talk to us because when she called, when she saw me, the way she hugged me, she said, doctor, you are looking so good. <laughs> I said, eh. she said, you are looking so good. I'm telling you, you are looking so good. So yesterday we were talking, he said, you know, it's a man that will tell a woman you are fine. When a woman tells you you are fine, you are fine. He said, you are looking so good. So I was just laughing. You see, you, there is nothing you gain by bringing people down. You don't gain anything by making people feel inferior. Mm -mm. It shows you don't have a good self-esteem. Now, lack of sleep is number one. Number two, eating the wrong foods. You know why we usually do uncooked food and why we incorporate it? Many people that know me, you don't eat anything cooked before 10 or 11. Because any food that you cook, there are no enzymes in that food. But the, you get enzymes in your food. In any, in any food that is not cooked, and we call it raw foods. The Lord gave me the name, uncooked. They are not cooked. God himself had already cooked them. So you can eat, cook, you can eat them without putting them through fire. And each season, wherever you are, you will see such food in, 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 the, volume of, in the volume that you like it. Now, eating the wrong foods, burnout, drug or alcohol abuse. Do you know that some people, they are good people, but they abuse drugs. They can abuse drugs because they are sick. 
they can abuse drugs because they want to feel good. Anytime you are feeling uneasy, reach out to somebody, especially somebody that you love, somebody that loves you, somebody that cares for you. When I took my mentor in ministry out yesterday, when I took her out, I told her, she said, when they say how, this, how, how much? She said, no, I won't do. I said, excuse me, when we were going, I said, anytime somebody takes you out, please relax. Please re relax. It's 60 years, it's not 60 days. And this woman, at the lowest level of my life, she was there. At the lowest level, she was there. I told her, I'll give you a treat. Treat is not only to go and eat nonsense from, from Idri. She did beautiful pedicure. I told her to do facial. She was afraid. <laughs> I said, okay, let me do that one. I said, you know, we had a good evening. We had a, a pleasant evening. It's not that I have all the money. Mm -mm. It is only when you go to loot, go to Bagada General Hospital, go to a solo general hospital, go to Randall General Hospital, go to Hunt, Hunt hospitals, you will appreciate good health. You will appreciate good relationships. Now, another thing it will do to your health is self-harm. You begin, I know people that when they are, their minds are corrupted, they may use knife or razor blade and start cutting themselves. I have seen it happen. And they will be leaking the blood. That is self-harm. It may even lead you to depression. It may lead you to, do you know that, that somebody called you and said to you, you're looking good and you laugh out. You don't know what it has done to you. The person are not giving you money, but that person are giving you something that money can't buy. That's why you don't make people feel bad about themselves. Don't you ever dare it. You don't dare it. If you don't know what to do, close your mouth. Then the next one is anxiety. Anxiety. The scary thing is that we all have the breaking points. All these people that commit suicide, 90 something percent of them, no, 90% of them, or let me be very objective, 80% of them are Christians. Either they are in the church choir or in the ushering or anything, anything. At lunch, when was that? I think on Friday, on, at lunch, when, when we were eating, a woman said to us, if I know what I know now, my husband would not have died. All of us turned to her. She said, do you know my husband died just out of stress? I'm in a ministry with my husband for 25 years and they've transferred us to almost 15, 17 stations. You can imagine how my children were. You know, these people, they are, they are tasking their pastors. I don't want to call the name of the church. They are tasking their pastors. My, my husband died because of stress. So one of us said that the husband also was experiencing that until she intervened in the life of the husband. I said, you can't continue like this. You can't continue like this. Many, you know, I tell people, no matter what you think you are doing, it's just that people don't die and wake up. If you just do small prank, that do just do like you died, you see people eh, dance on top of your corpse. You see people, you are alive. People are struggling for your position. Just imagine when you are dead. You see people rejoicing. That's why I tell people, don't be an answer to the prayers of your enemies and do not stay where they kept you. Make sure there's a movement. Disappoint your enemies. That's one of the things I tell my children. Anything that they want you to be, be the other, be the opposite. When I told my daughter, I want you to make a first class. She said, mommy, I'm not doing anything with it. I'm not even going to work for anybody. I have already, already have an, a mindset. I said, no. It is important to me. It will help me. That which I wasn't able to accomplish, I want you to accomplish it. I don't want to put myself in your in yourself, but help me because I know you have the capacity. 
And my daughter said to me, after one presentation I went, um, UNICEF said B invited me to speak to, to train the trainers at Ijabode. You know, I'm a professional guidance counselor and I have my, my PhD thesis on, is on adolescents, the psychosocial problems of adolescents. So they called me and I spoke from my heart. The woman said she, that some people can read out things, but this woman spoke, because anytime I am, I want to speak, go, 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 I speak it from my heart. So when the lady that invited me told my daughter, your mother vindicated my bringing her, my daughter said to me, mommy, what do you want me to do for you? I said, I want you to make a first class. She said, oh yeah, how do I do that? I got up. I didn't know Jack about computer science and information technology, but I have the temporal uh, transcript. I just brought it out. I say like this course now that you made four points, if you can level it up to five, you don't even ever dare make a three point anything, let it be five. And that next time, my daughter leveled it up from three, from yes, three point something, she moved up to four point something. I told her you can do better. The next semester, my daughter leveled it up five points and she jumped into, into, into first class. And towards the end, issues came. I left, you know, eh, except you, you leave what is, what is aiding you to help somebody. That's when you know that you are, you are leaving. I, my daughter was struggling. I said, don't bother about me. You know what? Any pan now, you will, you will sleep below 4.5. I said, don't worry, I'm fine. Just maintain the status quo, maintain the tempo. And she graduated with first class. On the International Women's Day, where she works, she's the only black that they featured in their blog. So you see, be, be all you have that you can. That which you know you didn't do well. Make sure the children may not be your biological children. Look for your nieces, your cousins, even the, a child living with you. You can raise that child to somebody that tomorrow that person may be the right hand man you have. Don't look down on people. It's a sign of low self esteem. And anytime you are you have reached your breaking point, please seek professional help. You know, Les Brown said, seeking for help does not mean that you are weak. It only means that you want to remain strong. At times I will be overwhelmed. I'll put a call across. I said, please pray for me. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. And people will pray for me. Stop doing Superman. That's why people die. Pastors die on the pulpit. They die because they don't want to appear vulnerable. In your vulnerability is your pride. Because that's your story. It's what we make people to say, ah, because these people, this person went through this, I can. I was talking with a dear sister. I featured her in, I think, episode 161. The day we did a viol, viol, um, domestic violence, she, she's a survivor of domestic violence in marriage. I was talking to her. You know what she told me? She said, doctor, you don't know that your attitude is giving me a lot of strength in this difficult time. The way you, the way you, 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 you do your things, eh? Hey, I just said, why am I struggling? Giving myself headache. I just relaxed. At that point, there was something we were planning. So I told her, she said, yes, yeah, so that what you said is true. That a particular lady said there is power in secrecy. It's not everybody you tell your, your, your plans. It's not everybody you open up to. There are people you discuss anything worthwhile with. That's the end. They are Christians. The highest number of witches and wizards are in the churches. If you don't want, if you believe me, believe me. If you don't want to believe me, don't believe me. The highest number, the highest occultism, the highest level of politics, dangerous politics, is in the church. That's why anybody that has airs, this, 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 I stay away. I don't want to be caught the second time. 
Now, setting boundaries is not easy. It's not easy to set boundaries. So it's not easy to set boundaries. So mm -mm. it is not easy, but you need to start with the right mind frame and a can-do attitude. I have set boundaries because I know it. My father brought me up, but at a point I, I violated it because I wanted to belong. They will do the wrong thing to me. I will be the one to apologize. They will, they, they will not treat me well. I will, I, will be doing, I will be doing as if I'm smiling, but I know it's not right. At a point I said, no way, no way. I can't be another person. Many of us, you know, the first thing I said, some people wear masks as they disguise their, their real person, the real person inside. Don't do that. They don't do that. Now, there is no shame in asking for support. That's what many pastors in this climb lack. You may be, you may be called to, a, to minister somewhere, and you know that something, something is not adding up. You know what you do? You can reach out to a, a, a colleague and say, can you please go with me? What you could do in order to, not to offend your host is to say something, say one or two things. And I say, I came with a brother and that brother knows even this topic more than I. Can I bring up so, so, so to speak to us? You, it is support you are seeking. But some people will go because of an a room of, 40,000 or 50,000, you just die for nothing. You die for nothing. You see me, I told God from the beginning, separate my business from, from my ministry. I don't want to depend on anybody's tithe. And for the first time, my second son paid me tithe yesterday. I was surprised when he said, I said, what's the money for? He said, money, my company wants to pay you tithe. Say sure. Did I manipulate it? No. Did I coerce him? No. Did I use corner, 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 corner? No. You know me, I mean, the way I'm blunt here is the way I'm blunt here. Anybody, I have my cousins here, to the paternal side, to the maternal side, yeah, they can attest to what I'm saying. I'm a very real person. When you are angry, show you are angry. Don't pretend. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You are killing yourself. There is no shame in asking for support to get yourself in the right place to start working on these strategies. I will close 20 questions. 20 questions. How do you know if you have boundary issues? You may need to go back to this video on YouTube because the moment I finish now, my daughter will upload it on my YouTube. So you can go to Dr. Favorite. I said it. You need to answer these 20 questions. These 20 questions, eh? you score yourself one to five. One to five, being never, never. Five, being always. If you get more always, you have an issue and you help yourself. You may not know the implications of this on your health until you begin to apply these principles. Once again, I thank you so sincerely for joining me. My name, once again, is Afoma Chukufevo Molisa. I have a PhD in guidance and counseling with psychology from the University of Lagos. I am not a medical doctor. I'm called to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And by God's grace, I'm a certified coach, wellness coach. It's my pleasure having you today. And my desire is that I'll see you next week. Because next week, we will discuss parenting styles and how you can raise your children. Even if they have grown, you can still help them to do one or two things. Because my daughter told me last December, she told me she wanted to go and see a friend, a man, they school together. I said, no, you don't go in such a A man comes to look for you. She said, at the back of my mouth. Again, I freeze. Can you, can you, can you? No, no. She don't do that. You are more than this. Ngozi Okonkwa, please, can you mute Mama your... Mia. Mama Mia. Mama Mia. She wasn't paying attention. So let me remove her. Maybe she mistakenly pressed on the... On the...
on the on the button. So 20 things I will give us and I'll close with it. If you answer one to five, you know it's never. If you answer five, you know it's always. Then ask God to help you and then go back to all the series. We started this on the 4th of June. We did it on the 18th, on the 11th of June. We did another one on the 25th of, uh, 18th of June and today is 25th. I thank you so sincerely for joining us. This is Great Life with Dr. Afomani as every Sunday evening by 8 p.m. Nigerian time. The 20 questions are these. Number one, do you regularly feel? Do you regularly feel stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed? You don't need to answer me. Just be. Either you write the question that if you can get it. Somebody usually is always smart typing questions here. Thank you so very much. It was a valuable, massive, valuable content. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Star Stephen. Okay. Now, do you regularly feel stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed? That's number one. Number two, do you feel like you are not in control of your life? or that others tend to control it for you? Maybe your kids, your partners, your parents, etc. I know a sister, at a point she told me, Dr. Molisa, I am no more in control of my life. It's as if people are controlling the life for me. And I told her, you have to put a stop to it. And today she is in control of her life because many of the things she, she will give in to, if she doesn't, then she may feel, she, you know, two things, eh? two things when you are not, when you don't have healthy boundaries, you feel guilty and you are afraid, fear and guilty. We will, we will talk about this as time goes on. Do you feel like you are not in control of your life or others tend to control it for you? Maybe you do you know some people, their kids control them. Hey, mommy, I don't want to eat you. Yeah. I want to eat jello fries with bacon. I want to eat this. The one we running up and down. The man may not even have the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Number three, do you feel like there is always something that needs to be done or that you are always behind on things? Something needs to be done or you are always behind on things. Number four, do you feel like your loved ones take advantage of you, uh, take advantage of your time? your generosity. You know, <laughs> Jason, some people live overseas. I was talking with a woman this evening. I was taking my birth and I was talking with her because I saw she called me. So I said, if I give in to relaxing, I will be late. So I was having my birth. I, I put the phone. I asked her, what of your son? He said, hmm. my son said that there are so much suffering where he went to one African country. He said, he, Excuse me. I say, you know why I asked after that your son. I know he can make money and live comfortably in Nigeria because he well, he is well domesticated. But if you tell him not to travel, he may think you don't love him. Now he has gone there. He has seen. You know what he told? That the son said that the suffering there is too much. That Nigeria is blessed. You know when I tell the Nigeria is blessed, people don't think I'm lying. I love overseas to go and come. Shebi. They will they, to go and come, but for me to carry my bag, walk out like this, go overseas to live. I don't think I can do that. Number one, I have problem with cold. So, when the people struggle, people in US, especially, they may say they are nurses or health workers. They struggle. Some do two jobs, some three. They may send you hundred dollars. Eh, if on small money, eh, he lives in the US. So you don't know that they, 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 their mental health is almost damaged. Some will live there with their children, their husbands are here. They struggle. Some will live there, live there with their wives are here. Are, you see, there are so many things that I can see. You are looking for money, they will give you. So whenever you are feeling they are not going to take advantage of your time and your generosity. 
there is not some, then you have boundary issue. Number five, do you go out of your way to prevent others from being hurt? You go out of your way. I'm not saying don't be kind. You know, I tell people, there is a big difference between compassion and sentiments. I remove some people from my platform, our platform, because somebody posted something. I said, this thing has been treated here. Don't post anything, this, that, that, that. A woman went and posted another thing that has nothing to do with our, our, our group. I removed her and I said, don't comment on things that you know that are prohib prohibited in this group. Some people will say, when you know what I did, I removed the woman that posted that. Thing. I removed all the people that commented. That woman went to apologize to me. But the people I removed, they will be forming. What is wrong with Dr. Forman? What is her own? The woman that posted that thing, she has apologized to me. But the other people I removed, they may be forming big. Uh, what's wrong? Are you I careless? Yes. I'd rather have 20 people or five people in that group and they comply with instruction. Do you know that a 76, 75 old man is in that group? When he saw that thing, instead of him commenting on the platform, because he knew I said, don't comment anything that is not wanted. He went to comment it on my own personal group. That's how you know people that are intelligent. So to, to have children, everybody can have children children some grace and they are moving up and down how do you package your life how do you live your life excuse me number six are, are the needs of your loved ones more important important than yours are the needs of your loved ones more important than yours you need to buy toothpaste but your other people your they need to buy shoe they are using for party you know, I tell them, one of the things I tell people, you can invest money in your health. Live as she be for people. You may not live, you may not do every as she be. So many good things. The beautiful ones are not yet born. It's a book. So many good things are coming. As far as there is hope, you have hope in this life. You will meet good things. I'm telling you, you may not be able to buy a plot of land when it's sold at 200,000. You can buy it when it's sold at 20 million or 50 million. Life is in phases and men in sizes. That's why you don't compete with anybody and you don't envy anybody. You see, Pastor Uche, I always use her as an example. I will go to her place, JJ, relax. Anything she has, she will give me. But some people that have Porsche, cruise, you know, she doesn't even have a car per se now, which she will have very soon. But then, you feel comfortable because you know you are you are dealing with somebody that is not a competitor with you. So many of us are competitors. Excuse me. That's why you can't help people. That's why you can't sincerely and genuinely love people. You always number seven. Do you feel that people won't want to be with you unless you meet their needs? Number eight, do you attend to the needs of your family and friends before you are old? I know a pastor's wife, her marriage always almost crashed. That day, I her back. The Lord told me that this woman is get, going through emotional problem. I said, the Lord told me you are not happy. Is there anything the problem? She broke down. She started crying. She said, anytime I have need and my, my, my in-laws have need, my children have need, friends have need, that my husband will we solve all their needs. My own will be the last. I say it's an error. And I, I, I called the husband because at the point she opened up, she was crying that she's, she will leave this marriage. But on the other side, she said, holy, holy pastor's wife. But she was dying. For you to know when this thing happened, Tete, I was not called to that many, this minister at that point. Number nine, do you resent your loved ones when they ask too much of you? Do you resent them when they ask too much of you? Do you feel like you need to justify your needs, whether that's to others or to yourself? You know, there's a post I made one day, don't complain, don't explain, don't complain, don't explain. You know, anytime you are in a relationship with somebody, before you want to do something, you explain, 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 explain. That's a toxic relationship. Run away from that. You don't need it. You don't need it. You see me? There are people consciously 
you will cut off from your life if you want to be healthy. You may have issue of high blood pressure. You don't know there are people causing you high blood pressure. Cut them off so that you have a fresh of breath air. You, 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 you live your life. Number 11, do you feel obliged to say yes because you are the only person who can help? You want to be the mother ego. Even when it's not convenient, you are running up and down, doing this, doing that. It's not right. You may think you are being, um, you are being a kind person. You are injuring your health. Number 12, does it ups upset you or hurt you when you think you have let others down? When you think you have let others down, somebody asks me for something. Not ordinarily, I, I'm supposed to do that for her. But somehow, I wasn't able. And because I know, I told him I can't help at this point. And it ended there. No, no, no feelings. Mm -hmm. No feelings. And I didn't think about it again. The only thing the man did was to apologize to me because I told him this is not the right time to ask me for such. Especially when you tell you pay me back. You, all the ones I've given you have been, have been paid me back. Anytime anybody will tell you I will pay you back. You see, the, the worst people to lend money to, they are Christians. I am saying it, you can take me to anywhere. They are Christians. Instead of me to lend money to you, henceforth, I would rather buy something from you or I will give you money and go away. Because the story, story, they will start putting scriptures for you. Then number 12, do you worry that people will leave you if you say no? Do you worry that people will leave you if you say no? Let them leave you. A man said he went to Zion Prayer Ministry, a lady that used to get cheer for him, a big keneko keneko. He called her. The girl was scheming for maybe marriage or something. He said, hey, every time, get cheer, get cheer. It's only getting cheer, I'm getting here. The man said, okay, no problem. The man, what can go to? What are they calling that? Uh, overflow. It was in overflow that the minister went there and met him, spoke to him, prayed for him. And today that man's life changed. Number 14, is it easier for you to just say yes to avoid confrontation? Many of us don't love confrontation. I won't give you the power to, for us to start exchanging words, but I will tell you what I, I will. Uh, what I know that is the right thing. You know, the, 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 the line is being just. Just be a just person. Don't be a perfect person. There's no perfect person. When you're angry, tell people you're angry. When you're happy, let people know you're happy. Number 15, do you doubt your feelings? Do, do you doubt your feelings? Assume you don't have the right to these feelings or feel that your feelings are not as important as those of others. When you are feeling good and people around you are not feeling so good, you may not rub it on their face, but go outside and feel good now. Some people will tell you, will say, eh, some, somebody did not have money to food, eat food. You are taking to, you, are, you took pastuche to spa. I chose it because I wanted, 60 years, no big joke. And when I was on the floor like that, she, she, she waka meet me on that floor. People that don't know how you, how you were doing today, they want to uh, uh, party with you. I will just excuse them, the worker they go. Excuse me. Just excuse them, the worker they go. You don't need any explanation. Don't explain, don't complain. Then 16, does it make you anxious when you think people don't like you? You know, one of the things I will share with us when we come to this end is the psychology of winning. I will tell us 10 things you need to have in your kitty. Because many of us, we are brought up as yes members, and that's what is happening. You know somebody can't pay you. You carry goods of 100 million and give the person, and the person is struggling. You are not happy because every time you are, you are unhappy, it's affecting your health. Number 17, does it make you anxious when people don't approve of you? You don't need anybody's approval. Don't allow anybody to validate you. Don't allow anybody to validate you. The only validation you need is in Christ Jesus. Anything that is just, anything that is good, 
if you do distance, you are good to go. Some people are so agogolistic, that's Kone, Kone, Kone man die. They will use Kone to take money from you. And they know they will not pay it because they feel you have money. Number 18, do you believe other people's criticism? Do you believe other people's criticism without considering the circumstance? People may criticize you in a good way, positively. People may criticize you in a good way, positively. You listen. But whenever you see anybody criticizing, you know what, how you know them. Anybody that when good things happen to you, it doesn't call you, it doesn't send you texts, congratulations. When, but when anything bad happens, don't pick any call. Don't owe them anything. Or they begin to criticize you. Uh, she doesn't even feel as if anything is happening to her. Let, the, let what is happening to you happen to them so that they will feel what you are feeling. Because it's only the person that wears the shoe that knows where it hurts. Number nine, number 19, are others able to control how you feel by playing with your emotions? You know, some people play with people's emotions. And this one, that's one, that one. Especially men, you do it to women so many times. You see a woman, maybe she made more sales from her business. Eh, 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 this house that we are building in the village, that is a uh, block and water is pouring it on it. You have money to do that, but you just want to squeeze money. Why don't you come and play and say, darling, you know, this is our house. Now that you've made some game, can you bring something? Let's put it there. Now together, now, now two of us, we enjoy it too. Women are too, they are babyish. To, 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 manip to maneuver. But when you start doing gra gra, anytime you see a, a woman, waga, like, that man is not doing the right thing. You can do so many things to bring a woman to, 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 to do what you want her to do. I, I don't like to be a man, but if I be a man, my wife, they will think I use juju on her. You see all these men, there's no juju they use. It's just the way they relate with them. A woman will just relax. May even give you the whole money. Say, oh, yeah, take everything. Let's do, let's go and do it. But if you if you start using corner, corner, chuku, 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 the woman will, 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 will revolt. And when a woman revolts, it's always dangerous. It's more, it's more, it's more, it's more, it's more, it's more, more fatter than Titanic sinking in the ocean. Finally, number 20, do you find yourself making excuses for others or covering for them? When somebody complained that the particular woman would just go without, without saying even hello, this one, and we, the, 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 the training ended on Friday, so many people will contact, although we are, we are in a group, but went out, Please come and give me your number. This, that, that, that woman left. Another woman was trying to make excuses. I told my friend, this is this guy. I said, leave that one. That one has no, the two of them are together. So we have come to the end of our episode 192. And I don't know whether you have learned anything. I don't know whether what you have learned to have increased. You know, there might be things you are doing, you don't even know. Some people have gone out of their way to make researches on it and, and wrote on it. The owner of this book that I am using to talk to us is Chase Hills. Chase Hills. And the name of the book is Healthy Boundaries. Healthy Boundaries. You can download it. You can read it. You can go through it. You know, I use my experiences and experiences of others as a guidance counselor to in, infuse into it. You see, I'm reading it out because I read it and I write it out. I thank you so much for joining me. I don't know whether I have value. If you have value, can you please type a 555 and you have any contributions to make, you can go ahead. My name once again remains Afoma Favor, Afoma Chukumolisa. I don't, I'm not a medical doctor. I have a PhD in guidance and counseling. People always look at me and say, why do you smile? Even when situation around you doesn't make for smiling, I say, because I have found a way around it and I'm a master of my emotions. 
and my circumstances. It doesn't mean that some of the times I don't go down. But when you allow cortisol to overrun your system, you get sick. But when you allow the happiness hormones you are always happy and you are always fresh. Thank you so very much for your time. God bless you. You can join my Facebook page. You can follow me on my Facebook page, Aforma Molisa. And then my YouTube page, my YouTube channel, Dr. Favor. God bless you. God, God honor you. Thank you for joining me next week. Because we didn't finish it, the Lord told me, you won't stop until I ask you to stop. I want to deliver my children, especially Christians. I'm not saying that Muslims won't be part of it or when they are here, but I tell you, you know, some people are using religion to confuse a lot of people. They make religion too tedious. God is a simple God. God is a loving God. God is not a taskmaster. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Thank you so very much. I love you. And that's why I appear all the time. Thank you. Any contributions, you can make it now. And you can, you can open your mic, make any contributions before we wrap it up. Thank you. And God bless you. Any question on the chat? Was a wonderful night. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. In the absence of any question, let's make it again next week. Let's make it again next week, Sunday. Thank you and have a fantastic night rest. Bye. Thank you. Good night, man.